Hi everyone, uh, my name is architect uh, Philip Kungu. I am a fellow member of the Architectural Association of Kenya and I'm pleased to get this opportunity uh, presented by the association on meet the fellow members of the profession and I will use this little time that we have to share a little bit about myself, my professional life, um, what I've done, my achievements, uh, some of the challenges and how I see the profession going and maybe a little bit of advice uh, to our young uh, professionals. Uh, in terms of my professional background, I hold a bachelor's degree in architecture from the University of Nairobi and a master's degree from the University of Helsinki of Technology in Helsinki, Finland. Uh, with regard to the AAK, um, I became a corporate member of AAK in January 1988 and became a fellow uh, in 2001. And if I do recall well, we were the inaugural um, class of uh, fellows of the Architectural Association of Kenya. And as you well know, the fellow is uh, an honor that is conferred to members of the association who have made distinguished contribution and service to the profession. So in that sense, I feel really privileged and honored by the association in recognition of what we have done. Um, with regard to my background, after my master's, I did um, take on a teaching job at the University of Nairobi as a lecturer, where I taught between 1986 up to 1995. And what motivated me to go back and teach is, uh, was that I thought I had gotten a very good education and I wanted to share a little bit of what I had uh, gained myself and made me who I am. So I spent those years in the university deliberately um, sharing out uh, this experience and it must rank as one of the most enjoyable times in my, in my career and in, in, in my life. Um, following that, I decided that it would be important for me to join the profession in an active capacity by becoming um, a practicing architect. And indeed, soon after uh, passing the professional exams in 1988, I, together with my partner Nelson Otieno, who for, we formed Otieno and Kungu uh, Associates. And it's a firm that has been in practice since 1990 uh, to date. Um, professionally, it also gave me an opportunity to serve my association, the Architectural Association of Kenya, in very many capacities. Uh, but I think all these things rose to a climax when in 2000, and uh, the year 2000, I became elected as the 13th president of the Commonwealth Association of Architects. I am sure that all my professional colleagues know that the Commonwealth Association of Architects is an association that brings together um, over probably now about 100,000 architects in the Commonwealth uh, countries. And it was indeed a great honor for me to serve for three years as the president. Um, professionally also, I've had an opportunity to do very many things. I have participated in architectural competitions, both local and international, in which I've served uh, both as a jury member, as chairman or vice chairman. Um, I have participated in very many um, conferences and workshops and things like that, basically uh, as part of my professional growth and also giving uh, back uh, to, to society. But I think that uh, while we talk about uh, the profession mainly, it would also be good to talk a little bit about life because what we are today is a sum total of um, all the things that we have done uh, in, in, in life. I have also in my career had an opportunity to serve in the public service and some of you may recall that with the coming of the Constitution 2010 which provided for county governments, I got an opportunity to serve in the Nairobi City County uh, as a chairman of the Public uh, Service Board. This it wasn't really my first time I had been associated with the Nairobi City Council in very many uh, previous uh, engagements. And uh, during these six years where I served as the chair, I did uh, learn a lot. I thought I also made uh, quite a bit of um, contribution. Those who know me well know that uh, in terms of public service, 
my records and my achievement and my contribution is there. Why? Because of a deeply held value of public service and uh, the greater, greater good. I am motivated by wanting to add value uh, to what I do and uh, making a difference in, in society. And if you see uh, in my life, uh, my life has revolved a lot around uh, public service. Indeed, even my time at um, the University of Nairobi, I took it as part of public service because I was contributing to the making of the future uh, architects. I have been privileged to serve in very, very many leadership uh, positions and uh, many people know me by my other name of chairman because I've literally been chairman in, in, in everything and that's become like sort of my, my, second, uh, my second nature uh, or second name as, as, as it were. But what is important for us as professionals is this. Um, in my career, I have learned that um, to be trained as a professional, it is important that you stick to the tenets, um, the values, traditions, and practices of professionalism. And that is what is going to draw the line between whether you are going to be a successful architect or not. Um, your personal integrity uh, as a person and also as, as, a, as a professional is something that will be called into play literally with every engagement um, that, you, that you have or with every person that you meet in, in, in life. And this is the reality. I've had a long career as a practicing architect of now slightly over 30 years. And I think during that time, I've had a chance to interact with very many people. Um, I have learned a lot of things. I, I have been empowered in ways I could not imagine. But I also want to think that I've also made some little contributions here and there. Um, I have served the AAK with great dedication and commitment, uh, and especially during difficult times of change and transformation. And the details are out there in the association. They are aware of the contributions that we've made. And I'm very, very happy that some of those changes that we made, um, the steps that we took, gave uh, the Architectural Association a rebirth. And one of the things that really excites me about the AAK is that we now have a group of young, energetic, enthusiastic, very ambitious uh, men and women who are running the association. And they have transformed the association. The association is doing things we never imagined during our time. And for me, this is a good vindication of the founding steps or the foundations that we laid. And I'm very excited and I always take up any opportunity to engage with them because I think they are taking the association in the right, the right, um, in the right direction. I also want to particularly mention uh, the issue of gender. Um, the Architectural Association of Kenya now has uh, a lady president. This is a great achievement uh, for us. And they serve with great dedication and enthusiasm uh, despite all other um, difficulties or challenges that they may have. Um, I have seen this also in the university where uh, for the last five years I've been serving also as an external examiner and it is clear that the number of um, women architects graduating from the university, uh, the, our university there, are more than the men. And I want to say without fear of contradiction that in my experience in the last five years we have had more women um, students turning up first classes than their male counterparts. This is an indication of how well and strong uh, the, the profession uh, is, 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 is growing. Um, what about the future? The, the world has changed from the times I joined the University of Nairobi as a student in September 1977 to when I graduated in 1983 and now 30 years later the, the world has changed. Now, on reflection, I think that the ways we used to do our things, the traditions that we have, the style of doing things has significantly changed because now we have 
um, social media and IT generally to, 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 to contend with. Um, the trainings that we had, um, some of the skills we have are no longer relevant or they're no longer useful in the, in the current uh, situation. Um, the traditional role in which we were trained as architects, good surveyors of engineers is changing because society is also demanding more than just our technical uh, and professional abilities. We are expected to engage with the social issues in our, in our society. We are supposed to engage with other developmental issues. And that explains why in my own personal life I have taken time and trouble to give a little bit of my time and experience in some of these areas because I want to add value and I want to make a difference. Going forward, some of these skills, we will find that they've been overtaken by events. As it is, when I went, we were designing and drawing on tracing paper, and the computers had not come in, but now the computer is, the, is literally your fork and spoon and knife or your profession if you want to uh, eat from, from, from it as it were. And it has brought a big challenge for a lot of us uh, who were trained then to also up our skills, change, transform, if we are to remain relevant and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and useful in our times. So what am I saying? The new professional, whether you are the architect, whether you are the engineer, whether you are the social scientist, whatever you are, what I see is that because of expectations of society and the way society has changed, the future professional needs to be a multi-skilled person because he or she will be required to be performing multi-functions. Um, the world in which we live in is becoming or has become very, very competitive. And if we are to remain relevant and useful, we just have to gain this um, new skills. So I would like to say that um, we need to be prepared, our generation needs to be prepared and as we are told there is also the concept of um, lifelong learning. We have to keep learning, we have to keep updating our skills so that we can remain relevant. To the young architects, what do I say? I say this, the deeply held values of the profession have never changed over a period of time. Honesty knows no or has no time limits. Your personal integrity has no time limits. Your ability to be professional in everything that you do so that you're seen as a competent uh, professional, trust, trustworthy, um, to gain the confidence of a client and deliver on, on whatever it is they want to do, that will remain. So even if you are going to be required to have special skills, other skills, you're going to perform many other functions than what you have been traditionally trained for, those will never change. And therefore, for young people, there must never be shortcuts. You should never be lured on that wide road which will lead you to do things that are not professional. Because in the end, your reputation, your name, is what counts. Uh, and and, and, and I'll, I'll tell you for sure, nobody really cares how much money you make. Nobody really cares how powerful or big titles you have. In the end, your own personal integrity and professionalism is what is going to see you through and is what is going to ensure um, a legacy um, uh, for you. So perhaps I would like to say in ending, that when I reflect on my own personal life, I think I've led a fulfilled life. I don't think that there is anything that I have wanted to do, I've not had the opportunity to do. But more importantly, is to leverage that experience, to leverage um, that knowledge, and perhaps given the age where we are, uh, God perhaps has endowed us with a little bit of wisdom, that we share this wisdom for the benefit of the future uh, generations. So, what am I saying? You have no choice but to be disciplined in your personal life. 
you have to be focused in terms of what you want to do, the big dreams that you, that you, that you have. Because if you look at some of us, our backgrounds, we probably have not been where we are today if we were not focused, if we didn't have uh, these big dreams uh, that we set for ourselves. And, and someone said uh, that if the dream is big enough, the facts don't matter. And we are living testimonies of, of this kind of, of, of thinking. I think that where we are, or where I am in my life, professional and in terms of uh, the chronological uh, sort of age, I need to worry uh, about legacy issues. What is it that I'm leaving behind? What is it that I want to be remembered for? And therefore, as I've said in other forums and to other people, at this stage in life, it is important that you make peace with fellow man. It is important that you make peace with your, with your God or your maker, as it were. Because when all is said and done, when Philip Kungu, the past president of the Commonwealth Association, is gone, the fellow of the Architectural Association is gone, the chairman of this, that, or the other organization, the question that must be asked, what really is left? What really is left? When all these titles are taken away from you, what really is left? And if that is important for you, then from day one, you must decide that you want to be remembered and what it is that you want to be remembered for. And if you do that, you will certainly live your life very differently. You will have an impact on society. You will mentor many people and you will become a point, a good point of reference, not just for professionalism, but all other spheres of life. And you'd be somebody that everyone wants to emulate. And with those very few uh, words and maybe a little bit of um, summary of a very long experience, I once again want to thank AAK for making it possible for us privileged uh, fellow members of the Architectural Association to meet uh, our other members and society at large. Thank you very much, AAK.